welcome back guys to my channel thanks thank you very much for joining me so today we'll talk about we'll continue talking about the coordinate geometry in particular we are focusing on the circle so we'll be doing a higher level exam question from 2019 paper 2 so let's get started so this is 2019 higher level paper 2 question 3 the question reads, the point minus 2 comma k is on the circle x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 65. And you have to find the two possible values of k where k is real. So to solve this, we substitute the point into the equation. So we substitute the point minus 2k into the equation of the circle. So we note that the point is an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate is minus 2, the y-coordinate is k. So for x, we sub in minus 2, and then for y, we sub in k. So if you do that, you're going to end up with something like this. You're going to have x minus 2, so x is minus 2, minus 2 minus 2 squared, plus y minus 3, so y is k, k minus 3 squared equals 65. So now, if you tidy things up, you're going to end up with minus 2 minus 2 squared is 16. And then k minus 3 squared means k minus 3 multiplied by k minus 3. So every time when you square something, you multiply it by itself. So you're going to have k minus 3, k minus 3 equals 65. So to simplify things, to get rid of the brackets, we have the 16. And then k by k is k squared. k by minus 3 is minus 3k minus 3 by k minus 3k and then minus 3 by minus 3 is 9 equals 65 again we can tidy things up we can add like terms together so we have the k squared we add the minus 3k and the minus 3k we get minus 6k and then the 16 and the 9 we get 25 equals 65 so we notice that we have a we have a k squared term here so every time when you have a squared this means that this is a quadratic equation Therefore, you can use the quadratic formula or the B formula to solve this. So for you to use the B formula, you need everything to be on one side. So you need one side of the equation to be equal to zero. So what that means is we move the 65 across, so it becomes minus 65, or rather we take away 65 from either side. So this side becomes zero, this side becomes minus 40, and then minus 6k, and then k squared. So the quadratic formula reads like this. We have x. So in our case, we say we have k. So k equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So the goal is to find the, the values for a, b, and c, and we sub it into the formula. We get the roots or the solutions to the equation. So we get the values of k that satisfy this equation. So to get a, b, and c, we know that a is the value in front of the squared term. So in front of the k squared term so here there is a 1 so 1 k squared so a is 1 b is the value in front of the k term so the thing with the letter that is that doesn't have a squared so b is minus 6 and then c is the value that doesn't have any letter so in this case it's minus 40 so we sub them into this formula so you're gonna have k equals minus so it's x equals minus b so minus and then you know that b is minus 6 so minus minus 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared which is minus 6 squared minus 4 a is 1 c is minus 40 so 4 ac over 2 a so 2 by a which is 1 so here i would like to point out that these brackets this bracket here is very important if you're using a casio calculator because if you miss this bracket, your answer will be wrong. The Casio calculator, um, it was not perfectly designed. If you miss brackets and you square a negative number, the answer that it gives you will be wrong. So basically, every time when you square a negative number or when you square any number, the answer should be positive. However, on the Casio calculator, if you square minus 6 without putting it into brackets, it will give you an answer of minus 36, which is wrong. So just watch out for that. As a rule of thumb, always use brackets when you square something in the calculator. Anyway, so if you put this in the calculator, you will put the plus first. You find what k is. 
and then you change the plus to a minus and then you find the other value for k so if you do that you're going to get two values for k k equals 10 and k equals minus 4. so the second part of the question was saying uh the sec the circle s is in the first quadrant it touches both the x-axis and the y-axis the line t is 3x minus 4y plus 6 equals 0 is a tangent to s as shown find the equation of s so here it seems like they didn't give us a lot of information to find an equation of the circle but they did so you have to think of the strategy so a tangent is any line that touches a circle once so we see that t is a tangent there it touches the circle once here we also notice that the y-axis is a tangent it touches this, the, the, the circle there and also the x-axis is a tangent it touches the circle there so what that means is that we can clearly see that the distance between this part to the center that's the radius the radius it's also the same distance from the center to here so it means that the center the coordinates of the center are the same so the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the center are the same because we're starting at zero so if we move this way we're going let's say for example hypothetically we move three units to get to the center so one two three it should be the same here one two three because you're starting at zero they will read the same they'll read three three for the center so it's important to note that and to simplify the solution so we note that and we also note that the radius of this circle would be the same as the value of the coordinates so the radius would be from here to here so this is the same distance from here to here so if the center for example hypothetically we find that the center was 3 3 3 comma 3 the coordinates we know that the radius is also equal to 3 because we are starting from 0 1 2 3 that will be the radius so let's go through it uh, further the so to solve this again we mentioned that we notice that uh, the circle touches both axes which is important which means that the center the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the center are the same so h comma h so h these are just random letters we could have called them y comma y it's just signifying that they are the same and also we notice that the radius is also h because again imagine if this is 3 comma 3 because we're starting from 0 this is 0 x we're going to go 3 units so the radius will be 3 as well so radius equals h so this is important so the distance between a point and a line is given by this equation this is in the log tables we'll talk about what each of those terms mean so we notice that we have a point here from the center and we have a line the point to the line here we can utilize that line so we know that the distance between them it can be given by this equation but we know that the distance between any point to the, any edge to the edge of the circle is r so that's a radius from here to there that's radius so we know that's r so this equation if we substitute this point so this is uh, this has the equation of the line and the point so if you put that in this equation the answer that we get should equal the radius of the circle so let's do that so we know that the line we have can be written as that we're given that equation so 3x minus 4y plus 6 equals 0 so what we can do is we can start naming each of the terms in this equation so that we can substitute it in so a is 3 so a is the thing in front of the x and then b is minus 4 so don't forget the minus the b is minus 4 and then c is 6 here so we have the values for a b c so now the x the x1 and the y1 here x1 and y1 are values for the point so these are coordinates of the point this point is called x1 y1 but our point it's c so the center and we call it h comma h so h comma h so we know that x1 is h and y1 is also h so we sub those in into our equation here so we have a which is 3 so we have 3 by x1 which is h plus 
minus 4, so plus b by y1, so b by 1, y1 is minus 4 by h, so we're just subbing in values, and then plus c, c is 6, over the square root of a squared plus b squared, so the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. If you do that, we tidy things up. On the bottom, we get 5. On the top, we get minus h plus 6. So, so we restate the fact that the circle touches both axes. So it touches both the x-axis and the y-axis. So which means that the center has coordinates h, h. This means that the x and the y coordinate of the center are the same. So the h, they're just random letters. We could have used any letters here. This is just to signify that the center has the same coordinates. So we notice as well that the radius would have a value of h. So it will have a value similar to the coordinates. So moving on from that. In the previous slide, we found the distance between this point and uh, this point. So we found the distance was minus h plus 6 over 5. And we can let that distance equal r because we can notice that from the center to that point, it has a distance of r, which is the radius. So adding up from that, adding on from that, we can see that we remember that the radius is also equal to h. So we can change that r to h. So if you do that, r equals h, then we can rewrite the equation as minus h plus 6 over 5 equals h. So we can solve for h now. So if you multiply by 5 both sides, we have minus h plus 6 equals 5h. So if we add h to both sides, we have 6 equals 6h. And then if we divide by 6 both sides, we have h equals 1. So now we find the value of h. So that means we can find c. C would be 1, 1, if you sub in uh, 1 for h, and then r will be 1 as well. So C is h, h, and then r is 1. So now we have the center and we have the radius of the circle. So when you have those two things, you can define the circle. You can use the equation, the general equation of the circle, to define it. So if you know the center given by h, k, and the radius r, you can sub in these values, h, k, r, into this formula and you would have the equation of the circle. So basically when you have a center, what you do is you take the x-coordinate, you sub it in and you change its sign, it becomes minus h, and then you take the y-coordinate, we call it k, and then you put it in the equation, it becomes minus k, you change its sign. And then r, you just square r. So here we know the center, we know r. So we just sub in those values, so we're going to have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So that's x. We change the sign of the x coordinate. So it's 1 here. It becomes minus 1. So x minus 1 squared plus y. We change the sign for the y coordinate. It's 1 here. It turns into minus 1 squared equals r squared. So r is 1. So 1 squared. So we just tidy things up. So the final answer will be x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Thanks very much guys for tuning in. Please share the video and subscribe for more content. Thank you.